Thank you so much for joining us on another edition of At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. Anyone who's driven by the Peoria Airport has noticed a lot of construction going on, and we're going to be talking about the construction, the new terminal that is being built, and the impact it will have on travelers. And to do that, we have the director of airports, Gene Olson, with us. And I said airports because you, not only do you oversee the General Wayne A. Downing Peoria International Airport, but you also oversee the, the Mount Holly Airport. We, have, we do have two airports. And we'll talk a little bit about some future improvements in Mount Holly later in the program, but first a discussion of the uh, Peoria International Airport, the terminal, and more. We'll have video of the terminal and under construction in a moment, but first some background, Gene. Um, and welcome back to Peoria, by the way. I'm, I'm a little late in doing that. I know you've been here for a year and a half, but you're a native Peorian. That's right. Um, grew up here in Peoria, went to Peoria High School, and, and it's just wonderful to be back. Let's talk about preparation for the terminal. Now that we see a physical plant, when did this all start? Well, it really started out as a, as a conception of rehabilitating the existing terminal one more time. And I want to say that was back in 2005 or 6. Um, it didn't take long for the planning to realize that, um, that it was really going to, a rehab of the old terminal was not going to be sufficient for what we needed to do. And that's when they conceived the idea of building a new terminal. Did the new Central Illinois Regional Airport in Bloomington kind of push you in the new terminal direction? You know, I, I wasn't here then. Um, and so I, I, I can't really speak to that, but if you just look at the technical aspects of um, you know, what the building, the old building has and what it needed to have and a functional analysis of how, you know, for example, security was just shoehorned in there, um, just based on the technical aspects of it, it's the right decision. The terminal and more is costing about $65 million. There's some other improvements that we'll talk about momentarily. But you're not going to raise the tax rate in order to accomplish this. That's right. The, with the initial conception of the need for uh, a new terminal, the planning had begun already by that time. And for six or seven years, they've been doing the financial planning required to get there. So we actually, you know, it was kind of strange for me to come and when I first worked at the airport and look at the financials and see that we had a, you know, a whole lot of money in the bank. Uh, and that was really the... The, the financial planning that went into getting ready for the terminal. So as, as we see the terminal building being used, you're not, you know, people aren't gonna see a big increase in their taxes. And, and as we pay off the bonds uh, that were done for the, for the terminal, you should see some of those dropping off. Um, and also we made really good use of the available federal resources. We got about the maximum that anybody at, at this size airport can get nationally. Let's take a look at uh, the, con the new terminal. Uh, mind you, there is construction going on as we taped this a couple of weeks ago. So keep that in mind as you look at the new terminal at Peoria International Airport. We're looking at the outside of our new terminal here in Peoria. Uh, basically, the curvature of the building, as you can see, it resembles the river here in Peoria. As you look at the outside of the terminal, the right side will be ticketing, check-in. The center section will be essentially the main hall where passengers can be greeted and also prepared to enter the secured side of the airport. The left side will be baggage claim, car rental, buses, taxis. This new terminal is um, vastly different from our old terminal in regards to the openness, the skylights. Um, the overall feel, it's just, it's just a wide open space is what we were going for as compared to our old terminal. Another new feature here at the airport is the Premier Lot. Uh, it'll be a paid parking, essentially VIP parking area. Here at the ticketing and check-in counters for the airport, we have four main airlines here, uh, American, Allegiant, Delta, United Express. They would check your bag and then, and then put it on one of these two bag belts. Bags will roll in here through a scanner and then out the doors. What's also different from the old terminal is right now each airline, they kind of they screen the bags, it goes through the wall and then they all have their individual carriers or here it'll be on one common, car common carousel. So an airline tug would come in here, pull up to the curb here, grab their bag, put it on the cart and drive out. Here is the passenger reception area. Again, another difference from our old terminal. Um, eventually you'll see some nice 
leather chairs and, and couches in this area where people can sit and wait and sit outside our restaurant. Here we're looking at the TSA screening area, the security screening area, uh, both inbound and outbound. It's currently set up for two screening lanes with the potential to go to three for future development. A great new feature over here in the concourse is the airside restaurant. It'll be a full service restaurant as compared to our old terminal, which is uh, just more of a grab and go, sandwiches, things like that. Here you have a full bar and sit down restaurant, both land side and air side. Here at the Premier Lounge, it's another great feature that we're tying into our Premier parking lot. You'll be able to purchase Premier parking and Premier Lounge passes as a combo or separately. Here inside the concourse, looking at the overall brightness, the openness of the concourse, with the potential of 12 overall gates. Looking at one of our new jet bridges, we will have four new jet bridges and we're bringing over three refurbished jet bridges for a total of seven jet bridges on this new terminal. As you deplane and walk through the outbound side of the TSA checkpoint here, uh, these scanners will prevent somebody from re-entering the secured side of the concourse. We're looking at the car rental agencies right across from our baggage claim area. We'll have two baggage carousels. Another great feature will be the oversized baggage claim area where you can pick up your golf clubs, large large items. Backside of baggage claim, as you can see, only a wall is now separating us and it should be a vast improvement from the long runs we currently use where bags, bags can become jammed in the system. Overall, I think you can see this new airport terminal will be a vast improvement over our current facility. The efficiency, the mechanical upgrades, the maintenance side will be vast improvements over our old terminal, and we're really looking forward to being over here very shortly. Tyler mentioned the bags. Uh, right now, you are subject to baggage jams in the, in the current airport. Right. One of the more common complaints I get from people, and it was kind of a surprise, uh, was the length of time it takes to get bags at the old airport. Um, and, and I think what happens is, first of all, people don't realize that the same airline people that you're working with when you check in also go and load the baggage, unload the baggage, and cart it around. Um, and, and so that contributes a little bit to the delay. But, but we have about a 150-yard bag belt with a 90-degree curve in it. And if the bags are spaced too close together on that belt, um, when they go around the corner, you get a jam. Well, somebody has to climb up there and clear the jam and then there's nowhere to turn around, so they have to back back down the, the belt and restart it. Um, so that all takes time. As you saw in the video, um, all you have to do now is the, the, the tug drives up to the, the carousel, offloads the baggage, and it has to go through the thickness of one concrete block wall, and there it is for you. Um, also, the oversized bag pass-through at the old terminal, people had to go back upstairs to reclaim oversized baggage. So this eliminates you know, an extra trip for them. Um, we also have two bag rooms in the new terminal building. We have an outbound baggage room and an inbound baggage room, and they're segregated. So that speeds things up a little bit also. In, in the old terminal, we just have one bag room, and it has to have the baggage flows go both ways. What's the timetable for the opening of the new terminal? We should complete construction about mid-January. Um, and then we want to make sure that the building is going to be operational and that we know all the systems. So we're looking at about a four to six week period after construction completion so that we can commission all the systems, uh, learn how to operate them, and, and then fully you know, utilize all the systems before we move in. The last thing we want to do is you know, have boarding going on and have a circuit breaker pop somewhere and then not know where it is to go reset it. So we want to make sure we get all that down pat before we move in. And to make sure that the baggage system does work the way you've just described. Right, right. If uh, baggage is one of the complaints that you get, 
Another one is destinations that you can fly to out of the Peoria International Airport. And instead of me asking this next question, let me allow the retired CEO and chairman of Caterpillar, Jim Owens, who sat in your chair a week ago, let him explain and I'll have you respond to it. Here's Jim Owens. And that's easy. But for our employees who are taking commercial flights and who are traveling several times a week in many cases, or certainly every week in many cases, uh, if you've got to make a short hop and a connection and it doesn't work, uh, this becomes di very disruptive and additive to your work life and frustrating. So having a good airport, and, and we've gotten, Peoria Airport's gotten dramatically better. I mean, not just the new expansion is going to be very helpful, but also we've got a lot more direct flights now to cities that you can hub out of rather than just go from here to Chicago, where frequently the flights are canceled. But now at least we can get to Detroit or Minneapolis or Denver uh, or Dallas. So we're, we're adding cities and the more of these important hub cities that we can connect into, then the better off uh, the city is as a home to a corporate headquarters where a lot of people have to travel as part and parcel of their daily job. I'll, delete. I'll allow you to respond. Well, Mr. Owens is exactly right. Um, a community's access to air service is one of the key factors in economic development today. Uh, and that's exactly why we have an air service development program. Um, we have developed kind of a war chest so that we can fund some of our air service development initiatives. Uh, and, and, you know, today the airlines are so used to being courted by communities that they really almost wait for the communities to come and ask for service. So what we do is we put together, um, you know, we try to get as close as we can to our business community, uh, try to understand where it is that they want and need to go. And then we try to put together um, a program where we go out and work with the airlines to try to get those, uh, get those flights, get those cities. One of the things that we're real pleased to announce is that, um, you know, American has added a third Dallas flight. So that kind of spreads the, um, spreads the, the, the risk a little bit in terms of having a couple of options on, on that carrier to be able to travel. Uh, so you're not limited to one hub city. You mentioned the additional flight to Dallas. Uh, are you concerned that Capital Airport in Springfield will begin service to DFW uh, this coming spring? Not really. Um, you know, for that airport, that was really a switch of moving their service from Chicago to Dallas. Um, and, you know, Chicago, to, to use an old-fashioned metaphor, they're trying to put five pounds of potatoes in a three-pound sack. Uh, O'Hare is just extremely busy. And so when a minor uh, glitch like weather or something like that happens, it has nationwide ripples. Um, and so it is the, probably the lowest reliability city that we have in terms of delayed or canceled flights. And it's something we work constantly with the carriers to try to improve. You mentioned the war chest. Uh, you actually guarantee airlines uh, a certain level of, of uh, income? Well, it, it's about underwriting risk because when, a, when an airline comes into a community, if it's a new airline in a community they've never served before, they have the cost of starting a station, uh, staffing it, um, buying equipment and provisioning that station. Um, if it's an existing airline and flying to a new city, they're, they're basically undertaking something that is not known to them. Um, and so we have done that in the past. Um, a good example is United going to Denver. Um, we underwrote that, um, that service with a million dollar revenue guarantee, meaning we would guarantee revenue over time that they would never go below that. Uh, but the service was successful enough that we actually never had to tap into that fund. Can you share with us a new hub that you might be considering? Well, um, not directly, <laughs> because I don't want to tip our hands to our, our tip my hand to our competitor. Uh, both of our competitors are up and down the road, but you know all of us are all working on additional service. Um, all, all I can say at this point is that if you look at uh, um, the the route maps where we all go, we all go to the same places. And so we're looking at the, you know, the needs of our travelers, and we have access to data to see where people are going. Um, and we're, we're trying to do something that might change the game a little bit. 
the new terminal actually has less square footage than the old terminal, which surprised me because it feels roomier. Right. It's, uh, I think the old terminal is somewhere like 180,000 square feet, and the new terminal is going to be about 125,000 square feet. A big difference there is, um, you know, when the old terminal was developed, the trend in the 50s was you put everything together. Uh, so you have the control tower, you have the, um, we had an FAA weather uh, service at one point in that building. Later that became Ozarks Reservation Center. And then later on, that still, that became the Federal Reserve Bank um, Center. And, you know, that's the second floor of the terminal right now. It's not used for anything. Um, and we've had it available for lease and have really had a tough time attracting tenants. Um, so that's space that we didn't really need in the new building. Um, also, two of the six floors uh, in the old terminal are dedicated straight to the FAA for their, their control tower operations, and that's something we're not going to have in the new building either. The current control tower will stay for the interim. What happens to the old terminal? We would, we would like to begin demolition on the old terminal as soon as possible. Um, we're going through a design process right now to figure out exactly how much of it we can demolish, um, and then we want to build in some separation between the two buildings. Um, so we need to keep the control tower operating. It takes at least five years to build a new control tower. So for the five year period, we'll see the control tower stay there. There are certain parts of the building that we feel are kind of the low hanging fruit that we can demolish right away, like the current hold room or the boarding concourses as some people refer to them. Um, those we can probably knock down, some of the canopy out front and some of the wings in the ticketing lobby, we, we are hoping we can knock down. There's infrastructure that runs in and out of that building that uh, really impacts whether we can demolish it and if we can, the time frame over which we can demolish it. So we're gonna stay away from that infrastructure and, uh, um, and, and kind of work around that. So you are looking at a new tower, but it's at least five years in the future. That's right. Um, we're doing the siting study for a new tower right now. Uh, we have a date in January uh, where we get to go to the FAA Tech Center and participate in that site selection process. Um, this is, I'm really looking forward to it. You walk into a computer lab, but it is like a mock-up of a control tower cab. And instead of windows, they have computer screens. The FAA has already flown uh, aerial photography of the airport and sent a guy out to take pictures of all the buildings on the airport. So when they turn the computers on in this lab, it's like you're in a control tower at the Peoria airport. And then they can move it around digitally and raise it and lower it. Uh, things that they used to have to do with a cherry picker. Um, and if you made a mistake, you had to go back and do it all over again. Now it's all digital. Let's talk a little bit about the, the parking lot. Is Anything going, we heard Tyler talk about the premier parking, which will be paid, right? but there still will be free parking? Yeah, the vast majority of the parking lot, which everybody thinks of as the parking lot, will stay free. Uh, we built a second lot that's adjacent to the terminal building on the west side, um, and it will actually, we're calling it the premier lot, and it will be in conjunction with the premier lounge. We, we have a, a, a feature in the old terminal called the Skyway Business Lounge. And this will be the, the carryover of that. Um, what it will do is we, we will issue an ID card or a card similar to an ID card that will actually open the gate arms in the premier lot um, so that you can use your card to get in uh, and, and to get out. And then the card will also open the Skyway business lounge or the, the premier lounge. Um, so the premier lounge is a business. You, you go right. in and sit down with your computer or... Yeah, it's really intended to serve the function of, you know, the airlines for their best cu customers at larger airports have admirals clubs and things like that. And it's really intended to reward their frequent customers. Well, at smaller airports like ours, they don't typically build those facilities. So we've built one um, that can serve the same function. You know, I have to ask the next question, full body scanners. Will there be full body scanners, the ones that are under question right now, at the new terminal immediately or in the future? Well, that's the, that's the hot topic since Thanksgiving. Um, we are not on the list right now. I think about 65 airports have those scanners uh, and we are not on the list to receive them. Um, 
However, as we plan the transition for the move into the new terminal, there are adjustments being made in where the screening equipment is being placed and how it's being placed um, to accommodate for the possibility of getting um, some kind of, a, of advanced imaging technology scanner in the future. Uh, my hope is that by the time we get put on the list to have those machines, that the uh, technology will have advanced to the point where they're not going to be so obtrusive. Um, you know, they're talking about in the future having the display be just a stick figure and then it would highlight, you know, a problem area and say, hey, look here. Um, which, you know, I think that will ease a lot of people's privacy concerns and then hopefully they'll get some of the other issues about how the machines actually work ironed out by that time. The total cost of renovation of the airport, $65 million. About half of that is the new terminal. The other half is for what? Well, it, it was broken into bid packages. So in, in that $65 million, you had site preparation, you had uh, foundations, you had steel. Those were all separate bid packages. The main terminal building itself, the actual brick and mortar and, and furnishings, is about half that amount. Uh, there's also... Uh, um, a technology package in there that is our access control, in other words, our badging system, um, FIDS, which is the flight information display system, that's the screen that tells you where your airplane is right now, um, and, and video security um, so we can monitor what goes on inside the building. That's a separate package. We still have some landscaping left to do. Uh, and we still have some uh, money in there for uh, demolition of the old terminal. Let's turn our attention to the other airport. It's technically called Mount Holly Auxiliary Airport, not because it's an alternate to the, to the uh, greater, the Peoria International Airport, but you're going to extend the runway, why? Well, let's go back to the purpose of Mount Holly. The, the purpose of having a small airport like Mount Holly is to give an alternative to the smaller aircraft so that you preserve the capacity of the big airport for the commercial aircraft. Um, and so there's primarily single and twin engine aircraft based at Mount Holly. All the hangars are full there. Um, and it's a, it's a vibrant little airport um, and a lot of fun. If you want to go take a flying lesson, that's the place to go. Um, but the, the, um, the, the primary purpose, you know, the, air, the airport is serving aircraft of the size of King Airs on an occasional basis. And it's enough that, um, that it justifies a runway extension. So the, we're looking at about a 400 foot extension of the runway to take it out to about 4,000 feet. And that will help those King Air aircraft um, that size. Uh, they have handle a, the, do they have a faster landing speed? Right, it's, it's a higher landing and takeoff speed. Um, and so what it does is it lets them carry a little bit more weight out of that airport and it lets them do their takeoffs and landings with more of a margin of safety. Um, and so, in order to do that, we have to do an environmental assessment. So we look at the effect of the improvement on uh, the human and natural environment in the area of the airport. And, um, and then we're also doing what's called an airport layout plan update. The airport layout plan is a, a blueprint of what our proposed development is for the airport. And in order to get things funded by the FAA, it has to be on that blueprint. Um, so we're doing those studies right now so that in fiscal 2012, we can actually get the bulldozers out there and build the improvement. I, I, want to, I want to clarify one thing is that the airport actually, that the airport authority, the board that oversees you and the activities, is actually a landlord? Right. A lot of people, um, you know, we get a lot of calls every day for people who want us to help them find their bags and, and things like that. We don't actually do those functions. We don't handle bags, passengers, or security. We're more like the landlord, uh, and so we provide the airport as a facility for all of the commercial and governmental enterprises to come in and do what they do. Um, so it's almost like a, a good analogy would be a, a shopping mall or a shopping center. Uh, the people who own you know, Grand Prairie or Northwoods Mall don't actually sell you the products you buy there. They just provide the space for the businesses to, uh, to do that, and then they pay rent to the, uh, to the facility owner. Well, it's very similar with us. The airlines pay us rent. Um, the corporate hangar tenants pay us rent. We have individual aircraft owners that have T hangers. It's called that because it's in the shape of a T. Um, they pay us rent. 
we have the National Guard, uh, we have the Army Guard. So we have all these different tenants that occupy space on our facility. Um, so we don't actually fly planes or control air traffic, but we provide the facilities for people who do. And do you have to, at the request of an airline, for instance, have to upgrade certain things? I mean, what, what are they requesting? Um, well, there's certain things we have to do by government regulation. Um, so how we operate the airport is in accordance with Federal Aviation Regulations Part 139. So that, that dictates our runway maintenance programs, our lighting, our snow removal programs. Um, that's how that gets managed. We write up a manual that says how we're going to do that and then we have to stick to the manual. Uh, when it comes to improvements that are for a tenant, for example, like the airlines, what we will normally do, if, if it's something that we can provide for them, we'll go ahead and do that, but build it into the rent so that it pays for itself. Okay, and with that, I appreciate that. Well, once again, the opening date for the new terminal is not set in stone yet. It's not set in stone yet. Right now, it's tracking toward mid-February, mid to end of February. I, for one, am looking forward to it. Me too. I'd move in today if we could. <laughs> Gene Olson, Director of Airports, thank you so much for joining us on that issue. Thanks for having me. Next week, we'll be talking about food, local food, how it's grown, where you can find it. The next two weeks, we'll be talking about local food on At Issue. Until then, enjoy the holidays. <laughs>